I'm a little nervous. This is my first time that I celebrate, that I preside over this wonderful celebration of the Last Supper of the Lord, Holy Thursday. I've been a priest over a year, and last year I celebrated the Easter Vigil. Thank Father Nathan, <laughs> which is really difficult, but I survived it somehow by the grace of God. And today, I'm celebrating this Eucharist. I need so many things to talk about, and I'm nervous. I'm going to talk a lot. The homily is going to be long. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I have three ideas to share about. First, about the Eucharist. Two weeks ago, I came to visit the school, the second graders, because as they're preparing for their first communion, they were talking about the relationship between the Passover and the Eucharist. And as we hear today in the first reading, Jesus took the celebration of Passover and bring it a new meaning to it, a deeper meaning than it was in the Old Testament. We hear how Israelite, the Israel was a slaves in Egypt, and God chose his people and wanted to free them, but the king of Egypt, the Pharaoh, did not allow them to live. And you heard about the ten plagues that Egypt suffered because the king. The last plate is about all the older um, broad, the sons, the firstborns, were going to die in Egypt. The angel of death was going to pass and kill the firstborn in each family in Egypt. But he said, to you, Israel, I'm not going to do that. But you have to follow some steps in order for you to be free. And he says, take the lamb, slaughter, kill it, and put the blood and the, th I forgot, the marks of the door, the three things in the door. <laughs> put the blood there. See, I'm nervous. I'm forgetting English right now. <laughs> put the blood in there. And those that the angel of death will see the blood on your door and he won't kill anybody. He will just pass through the next door. To explain it a little bit better, I tell the second grader, so God wanted to kill the firstborn. So imagine your older brother that is going to be killed. I made a mistake, they freaked out. <laughs> the question they asked me is, is the Lord going to do it again? And actually, no. Because the firstborn of God did it for us. He is the Lamb of God who gave his blood that we may not experience death, that give us freedom, not freedom from the slavery of Egypt or Russia or Canada or Mexico or Illinois. It's not that kind of a slavery. Actually, it's the slavery from sin. And because of the Eucharist, with the sacrifice of the Lord, the Lord has freed us from that bondage, from that slavery to sin. And that is so wonderful about the Eucharist. One of the reasons I, be, reasons I became a priest was to celebrate the Eucharist, because I think that's an awesome gift from God. The Gospel says he loved them to the end. And sometimes we see the end as the cross. And it's actually not. To the end is until his second coming. And he loved us so much that he wanted to be with us. He didn't want to say, okay, I'm going to my father. See you later on the second coming. Good luck. <laughs> no, he said, I want to be with you. And I want to be so close to you that I want to become in this bread and wine that you may eat 
my own flesh and my own blood. And that is an awesome gift. If I can misquote um, the core of art, um, the saint who says, if you know the real meaning of the Eucharist, you will die of joy. You will never miss a mass. This church will be even fuller if we recognize what a wonderful gift we have in the Eucharist. It's just awesome. But it's a mystery. We won't fully understand it. We will understand it in heaven. But here, we try to. And as that's an effort to try to study the Eucharist, to try to, in faith, recognize that the Lord wants to be so close to us every single time we come to the Eucharist. So close that he wants to be food for us that we may become himself. And that is the wonderful thing about the Eucharist. And along with the first Eucharist, the Last Supper, is the gift of the priesthood. I don't know what you have done, Cabrini, that you deserve such wonderful priest. <laughs> I don't know what evil have you done that you deserve me, but that's, <laughs> that's a different story. So today, for priests, it's kind of our birthday. It's when we celebrate the institution of the priesthood, and that's an awesome gift. I don't deserve, I'm not worthy to this wonderful gift that the Lord has shared with me. It's just wonderful. This morning, <clears throat> I cry a lot. I'm kind of a current. This morning, my prayer was, wow, great, today is Holy Thursday, Lord, help me to practice my priesthood. Help me to give it to others. I shouldn't have prayed that. Because later after the morning prayer, some people called me for confessions. I had to go to the hospital to anoint somebody. And I said, Lord, okay, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But because I'm so joy, joyful and really happy to be a priest, and it's because the example of my brother priest. So, Father Nathan, Father Pat, we love you. Thank you for what you have done. <laughs> they do so much for our communities that it's just amazing. I'm really lazy next to them. <laughs> and the other thing that I want to talk about is, of course, the commandment to love one another. And what that it means is to be in service for others. As we read in the Gospel, it's the washing of the feet that the Lord calls us to wash each other's feet, to serve one another. I don't know about you, but I don't like to wash other people's feet. <laughs> I asked the question, who likes to wash people's feet in, today in the morning mass, morning prayer with the school kids, and some of them raised their hands. I, I don't know what's that all about. <laughs> but the Lord, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, God himself, became the servants of all of us to give us an example to give our lives for others. So right after the homily, we are going to remember the washing of the feet in this Eucharist. So some of you are going to step in and your feet be washed by this unworthy servant, but those who are going to not participate directly, I'm going to ask you something. And it's as we do the washing of the feet, try to think what the Lord is calling you to serve. 
Maybe the Lord is calling you to serve your sick spouse or your children or your in-laws of your own parents who are getting sicker and older. Or maybe you are called to serve other people through our parish, through our community, to the whole world. What is the Lord calling you to serve? If you don't have an answer for it, you are missing the point. Because all of us have somebody that we need to serve, that we need to share the love of God that we have received with others. So let us give thanks to the Lord for the wonderful gifts of the Eucharist and the priesthood. And let us reflect what the Lord is calling us to do. In the Greco-Roman philosophy, we, we Christians kind of or, or divide the human being into body, soul, and spirit. The Greco-Roman philosophers divided the human being in a different way. It says the, the human being is eyes and heart, and that's the, the, the feeling part, the thinking part of the human being. The other is the ears and the mouth. That's how we connect with one another. And the third son, or the third part of the human beings, is the hands and the feet who are calling us to action. The Lord is watching our feet today and is calling us to do something, to serve others, to share the love of God with others. I want to thank you for the things you have done for our parish, for our community, for the whole world. And I will con invite you again to continue to serve, to continue to share that wonderful love and faith that the Lord has done in the cross. He is our model of service. So let us continue to serve and watching each other's feet.